excess of meat bringing sickness uh -huh. and surfeiting. And, surf, and surfeiting. Surfeiting is an instance of going over and beyond what's usual and proper. That's what surfeiting is. Surfeiting is, that's just, you know, you know you already had a big piece of chicken. Why do you need three or four big pieces of chicken? <laughs> Are we down? No, but they're all touching his hands in and out, which possibly can't be the same. Mm -hmm. ah! Give us a second. I don't understand why our uh, what's the name goes down. I don't. I don't understand here. Internet on. About to, I'm about to see if I can get on here. Huh? You got the rise there? Sounds fine. What? Sounds fine. Sounds fine. Is, is the video chopping up? Is that no, what's going on? The video's not. They said it's better. It's better? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, we probably have to bring the Wi Fi thing closer to it. Yeah. yeah, it should be. Up. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to um, yes, thank you, thank you. We have died. Many people have died by over by overeating. Many people have died. Come on, but he that taken heed prolonged his life. But if you listen to the Bible, you will prolong your life. <laughs> we, brothers and sisters, we are in a war. We are in a war and we need to be able to do things to help us uh, prolong our lives and sustain our lives in this war. We need to do what we can do to help ourselves. In Ecclesiastic, it's a Sirach. We're still in this Sirach. Sirach 18 and 30. <clears throat> Sirach 18 and 30. <clears throat> Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thine appetite. Read that again. Ecclesiastes 37. 18 and 30. Mm -hmm. Go not after thy lust. Go not after your lust, come on, but refrain thyself from thine appetite. And, and refrain yourself from your appetites. This is um this can go, this can be used both ways. But as far as eating, refrain yourself from your lust and spiritual lust as well. Refrain yourself. Hold yourself back. Hold yourself back from thy own appetites. We just experienced a, a group of brothers who are Israelite brothers. I ain't gonna name the, the group online, but they they were experienced pro having problems. Their appetite wasn't right. And you can see that it wasn't right. They did not reframe themselves. They did not keep themselves. They had passed over and a bunch of butt naked women running around. But we pray that the most high duty brothers repent and have repented and we, and we pray God's blessing upon them for, for their repentance. <laughs> so let's go to the article. Did you, did you creep and grab this article? I want you to see what kind of war we in. I want to see what kind of war we in. Are we good? Everybody can hear us online. We're good? We're up? Okay, good. The first art, article one. Article one. This is an actual law. <clears throat> this is an actual, this is a summary of an actual law that's put in this in Congress in the United States. It went forth, it got voted on, and it's established as a law. <clears throat> this is a, a summary. Uh, HR 812. Bill summaries are authorized by CRS. Common Sense Consumption Act of 2009. Yeah, you hear what the actual bill is called? <clears throat> the Common Sense Consumption Act. The Common Sense Consumption Act, meaning 
you need to have enough common sense not to eat what I'm about to say, these foods that I'm about to say. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's, in the, that's in the bill. That's what it's called, it's the, the Common bill. Sense Act. Wow. Mm. Come on. <laughs> the Common Sense Consumption Act of 2009 mm -hmm. prohibits new and required dismissal of pending civil actions by any person against a manufacturer, marketer, distributor, advertiser, or seller of food or to dish or a trade association for any injury related to a person's accumulated acts of consumption of food and weight gain, obesity, and any associated health condition subject to such subjects to such prohibition, any action brought by a person other than the person on whose weight gain, obesity, or health condition, the action is based and any derivative action brought by or on behalf of any person or any representative spouse, parent, child, or other relative of that person. Excludes. Excludes from this prohibition any action alleging a breach of express contract or express warranty provided that that the grounds of recovery are unrelated to a person's weight, weight gain, uh -huh. obesity, or related health conditions. So in other words, you cannot sue McDonald's if you eat McDonald's for 30 days and drop dead. Your folk, your, your people can't say, all you had was McDonald's, you can't sue. Yeah. You can't, <laughs> <laughs> you can't <laughs> sue. So you would think with your tax dollars, you would think that they will provide some type of law of protection for you when it comes to these food industries and things like that. You, you the one paying your taxes and paying their salary, right? No, it's the other way around. They protect the food industries that are selling garbage to you to make sure they say, well, listen, we're gonna sell this garbage or you need to protect us with laws to make sure these people don't sue us. Mm -hmm. Cool, common sense consumption act. You have enough, you should have no better than eat this garbage. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> a knowing violation of a, of a federal or state statute <clears throat> applicable to the marketing, advertisement, or labeling of food with intent for a person to rely on that violation. Mm -hmm. Where such person relied on that violation and where such reliance was the proximate cause of injury related to that person's weight gain, obesity, or related health condition, or a violation brought by the Federal Trade Communication Commissioners under the Federal Trade Commissions Act, or by the Food and Drug Administration under the, under the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. Mm -hmm. So this law gives uh, gives uh, states that if you become unhealthy or die by consuming consuming their foods. Then uh, the government that the government regulates, then then they of the government um, and of the food industry will not be liable. Will not be liable. Excuse me, brothers and sisters. We have to learn. We have to listen to what they are saying, watch what they are saying, and learn from what they are saying. Peter, Peter, give me well, First Corinthians ten and twenty three. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23. All things are lawful, are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. Read that part again. All things are lawful for me, uh -huh. but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful, meaning just because that lamb is lawful don't mean you got to eat the whole lamb. <laughs> it's lawful. <laughs> but is it practical? Is it practical? One. All things are lawful for me, uh -huh. but all things edify not. Look, yeah, all things are lawful, but all things doesn't edify. That 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 the flesh of that venison is lawful, but does it edify? Does it edify the body or edify your body to eat the whole thing? All things should be done within moderation. All things should be done within moderation. <laughs> She's stuck. She's stuck. She's <clears throat> stuck. <laughs> 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 Is that on video? Yes. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
So we have to learn to do a 360 degree turn around uh, turn in terms of how what we think about foods and what and how we eat. What we what kind of uh, uh, food we ingest and how we ingest it. Just because it's convenient doesn't mean it's practical. So just get Revelations uh, 30 and 1. I know this ain't the kind of lesson y'all used to, but it's a necessary lesson. The necessary lesson. Like Revelations 13, let's start at verse 1. It's the book of Revelations. What did I say? 30. 30. I said, it's yeah. Like, yeah. It's the book of Revelation. <laughs> <laughs> was that why you was over there singing? Yeah, that? Right. <laughs> Listen, stop, stop. Hey, okay. um, stop. stop. <laughs> this is the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Come on. Having seven heads and ten horns. Heavens. The beast that rose up had seven heads. Ten horns. That, that's seven countries, seven countries, ten leaders. Come on. And upon his horns, ten crowns. Come on. And upon one of uh, and upon his head, the name of blasphemy. The name of blasphemy. So this is seven countries, ten leaders, but this is one nation of the same people that the Bible is speaking of. Drop down to verse four. Verse four. And they worship with the they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. Mm -hmm. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is like unto the beast? Who is like unto this one nation? Who is like unto this beast? Come on. Who is able to make war with And who is able to make war with this one beast? This one nation. Who's able to make war with him? Come on. Verse, drop down to verse 7. Verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Mm -hmm. And to over and it was re read it again. It was given unto him. And it was given unto him. This one beast, this one beast, it was given power to him to make war with the saints. To make war with the saints. This one nation was going to wage war upon the children of Israel. Come on. And to overcome them. And he and he will have power. To overcome them, read. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So he would, in other words, he would be able to dominate the world. If that would be his agenda, to, to dominate the known world. Let's go to Daniel now. Keep in mind, this one nation was, was given power to wage war against the saints or the children of Israel. Daniel 7 and 21. <clears throat> Daniel 7 verse 21. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints. And the same horn, the same uh, horn that we're talking about in Revelations, that same nation, that same nation made war against the saints, against the children of Israel. Come on. He prevailed against them. And he prevailed against them. Now, how did he wage war? And how is it that he prevailed? How did he prevail over us? He prevailed over us through the transatlantic slave trade, through the through his black codes, through his Jim Crow laws, and his institutional racism. This is how he prevailed, and 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 are and is currently prevailing over us. Let's not forget. His dietary laws is another instance in a way in how he prevails over us. This is how he prevailed over us. Now, when I say his dietary laws, I don't necessarily mean eating outside the law. Because we know he will eat bottom dwellers and pigs and things like anything that's unclean. We understand that. We know that. But that's not exactly what I'm talking about here. He prevailed over us through, through his dietary laws by manipulating what we eat. Even our clean foods are, man, are manipulated to, to a degree. We call that GMOs, genetically modified organisms. <clears throat> so what is a genetically modified organism? Genetically modified plant. Let me talk about that first. I got this from the World Health, the World Health Organization. I got several statements from them. 
Genetically modified is a technology that involves inserting DNA that inserts DNA into the genome of the organism to produce a genetically modified plant. New DNA is transferred into the plant cells. Usually the cells are then grown in tissue cultures where they develop into plants. The seeds produced by these plants will inherit a new DNA. Y'all hearing that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Will produce a new DNA. The characteristics of all living organisms are determined by, by their genetic makeup. Mm -hmm. And it is interaction with the, with the, in their interaction with the environment. The genetic makeup of an organism uh, is its genome, which in, which in all plants and animals is made up of DNA. The genome contains genes, regions of DNA that usually carry the instructions for making up proteins. It is these proteins that give the plant the characteristics, their characteristics. For example, for example, the color of flowers are determined by the genes that carry the instructions for making proteins involved in producing the pigments of colors on the petals. Genetic, genetic modification of plants involves adding a specific stretch of DNA into the plant genome, giving it new or different characteristics. This is what they are putting into the plant. This is what, and then their, their seed has the DNA. So if it changes the DNA of the plant, a living organism, you are a living organism. You ingest the plant and that DNA. At some point, it changes or adds to your DNA. This is a war on a whole nother level. It's a quiet war. It's a quiet war. You're just like, I'm eating clean food. I eat nothing but clean food. But they have a genetically modified even your clean food. You are at war. Shots are being fired when you open up the refrigerator door. <laughs> Bombs are going off at your stove. <laughs> This is another statement about uh, genetically modified food from the World Health Organization. It's an overview. Genetically modified foods are foods derived from organism, organisms which genetically modified material has been modified in a way that does not occur naturally. This DNA that they insert into your plant is man-made. So if they want a group of young men to, to be uh, effeminate, they make sure that they put certain types of, uh, of DNA into the foods that they know that these young men are going to be eating. Have you ever noticed that now you have, you have a, a lot of effeminate looking young men? They're so light in the... I'm serious. They're just so light and fluffy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, the, the women are seem seemingly heavier than the men. Yes. You know what I'm saying? They don't have that bulk, get, you know, that bulk, that range. They're just so dainty. Right. What you call it, baby? Small. What you call it? Small. Medium. They're so medium. They're so little. Yeah. This is supposed to be a man. His woman bigger than him. No, no wonder when we was out on the street, all the men were scared of their women. <laughs> Boy, they was doing women, them women make them had them running. <laughs> Where was I at? The technology is often called uh, modern biotechnology or gene technology, sometimes also a DNA technology or genetic, or watch this, or genetic engineering. Currently available genetic, uh, genetically modified foods stem mostly from plants. But watch this. But in the future, foods derived from genetic, genetic, genetically modified microorganisms 
or genetically modified animals are likely to be introduced into the market. Now that is a lie because we already have genetically modified food. Yeah. How old is this uh, article? This is new. Yeah, from the this is what this is. I don't know how old it is because this is just this is on their website. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a lie. We already have genetically modified foods. Yes. Meat, rather. Flesh, animal flesh, already been genetically modified. So they started by genetically modifying food in the 70s. They had, they had genetically modified animals in the 80s. So it's 2021. Who, they had genetically modified people walking around here. Trust. So with, with the foods we're talking about, maybe farm raised. I mean, all of them. Period. Yeah, all of them. Period. If anything in the wild is not genetic, hasn't been genetically modified. Mm -hmm. Anything that is farm raised, more than, more than likely, is genetically modified. Yes. Uh, a, a very high percentage of likelihood of being modified in some type of way. Right, I try to eat wild. Any, man, even the stuff in the wild, you got to worry about what they picked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anybody, anybody in their 40s going up, probably remember when tomatoes weren't around. Yeah, they were twisted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, they, 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 they were misshaped. Yeah. yeah. That's the way tomatoes supposed to be. Right. Yeah. I forgot. I forgot I went to a farm with my I forgot that they were oblong like that. Because mm -hmm. I'm just used to a perfectly brown tomato. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be perfect. No. That's a, that's a genetically modified tomato. Well, my grandfolks used to uh, make fried green tomatoes. The, them green tomatoes used to look like monsters. They were sitting on, you know what I'm saying? They have a slope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. Let's get Ezekiel right quick. Watch what watch what Ezekiel, man. This is this is fun. This is it's not funny. This yeah. is this is we didn't finish it. What what verse? Yeah, 22. We did Daniel 21. Let's do 22. <clears throat> Daniel 7 and 22, until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the most high mm -hmm. and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. That's the only time is we're going to be fully delivered. Uh, verse 22, Daniel uh, 7 and 22, was it? Mm -hmm. 7, 7 and 22, that's the time when we're going to be fully delivered out of our captivity. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Ezekiel now, Ezekiel 4 and 12. The book of Ezekiel, chapter I don't know why people don't know what time I'm teaching. I don't know why they're calling me. It's crazy. Book of Ezekiel, chapter 4, verse 12. And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes. You, you wanna, this is an example of the most high saying what, how we're going to be eating in our captivity. Come on. And thou shalt bake it with, with dumb uh -huh. that cometh out of a man in their sight. Now, what's that? You're going to make your food with boo boo. Yeah. With boo boo, he's telling the prophet this. For, let, me, let me put let me put a pen in it. Mm. This for all them brothers that want to be prophets. This for all them brothers that want to be prophets. Be careful what you ask for, because the Most High told this prophet to make your food with human feces as an example to how Israel is going to be eating. Make your food with human feces. That's right. Make them barley cakes. <laughs> make them <laughs> make them barley cakes with poop on them. Verse 13. And the most high said, even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whether I will drive them. That's this is how the children of Israel are going to eat their defiled bread, whatever I've driven them. Now, are you eating? Your food with poop on it that you know of, that you can see. You wash your food, you cook your food, right? But the Bible is showing, for example, that we're going to be eating the foul bread, the foul meat in the land of our captivity. It is going to be just like it came out of a human behind. Yeah, yeah. 
Like, just like it's like a human behind, came out of humans behind. Watch what he said, verse 14. Look at the look at the, the way the prophet is talking to him. But well, come on. Then, then said I, ah, most high thy power. Ah, most high thy power. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Behold, my soul have not been polluted. Uh -huh. For from my youth eat up even till now, come on. have I not eaten of that which died of itself? I haven't did nothing defiled. He said, I haven't eaten nothing defiled, please. Father, don't make me do it now. <laughs> come on. Or is torn in pieces, uh -huh. neither came their abominable flesh into my mouth. So he said he kept the law. Give me to the round 14 and 21. He said, I kept the law. This is where he got it from. We're going to come back here. But give me 14, Deuteronomy 14 and 21. Deuteronomy 14, verse 21. Ye shall not eat of anything that dies of itself. He just, we just, we just, uh, we just, we just heard, heard the prophet say that. Should not eat anything that dieth of itself. Come on. I shall give it unto the stranger that is in our gates. You should give it to the strangers in the gates. That nasty stuff, you give it to the stranger. Come on. That he may eat it. Mm -hmm. Or thou mayest sell it unto an alien. Mm -hmm. For thou art a holy people unto the most high. Yeah. We are holy. Come on. Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. All right. I ain't going to explain all of that. I just wanted to get to that part to let you know that the, the prophet is eating. He's eating. Like the Bible or the Torah tells him to eat, he's never eaten any other kind of way. Jump up, excuse me, jump up to verse three. Uh, Deuteronomy 14 and 3. Verse 3. Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. Mm -hmm. Cool. Does it? Is that it? Yeah. Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. So the prophet said, I haven't eaten anything abominable. I have anything to die of itself, no, nor anything that's been torn up by animals, a thing like that. He's saying, I kept the law completely. Let's go back to Ezekiel. Ezekiel is pleading this case. Look, please don't make me eat no man's no poop to come out, no, no human body, please. He's pleading this case. I've never, I've always kept the law. Verse 14. Then said I, I most high power. Behold, my soul has been has not been polluted, for from my youth up even till now have I not eaten of that which died of itself, mm -hmm. or is torn in pieces. We read that in the law. Yeah. Neither came there abominable flesh in my mouth. We read that in the law. Now let's go to verse 15. <clears throat> then he said unto me, Lo, I have given thee cow's dung for man's dung. He said, Well, since you haven't been uh, eating unclean foods. I understand, son. This is what I'm going to do for you. But don't use human feces. Eat, some, eat cow doodle now. Instead of human... <laughs> instead, of, instead, of, instead of man's dung, go ahead and eat some cow poop now. Come on. And thou shalt prepare thy bread therewith. You prepare your bread with cow poop now. He's the prophet, and the, all of Israel is looking for the prophet to see what Yah is saying to them. And he's showing them by example this is what I'm going to do to you. I'm going to have you go into these various countries and these various nations, and this is going to be your bread. It's going to be defiled. It will not be right until either one, you do it yourself or until I save you out of captivity. So all of the clean foods that we eat is still defiled. Just blew your Israelite mind off, yeah. didn't it? <sighs> Verse 16. <clears throat> Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, Behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem, and they shall eat bread by weight mm -hmm. and with care, and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment. Drink your water with astonishment. Your water is going to be defiled. Verse 17. That they may want bread and water and be astonished one with another and consume away for their iniquity. And consume away for your iniquity. This is your shame, Israel. We did this to ourselves. We did this to ourselves. Come back to the most high. So we can, 
be free from what's going on in this country, in this world. Let's go to the second article. Let's go to the second article. Let's go to the second article. Somebody's experiencing those terrible twos. <laughs> I'm hoping it's gonna peak out. It's gonna peak out about five. Don't be about five before it peak out. <laughs> <laughs> yep, uh, article two. This is it. Very, uh, very lead. Yeah. Uh, this is the second article. Very lead. Millions of people still get water through lead pipes. For decades, LAX EPA blacks. I'm sorry, blacks EPA rules missed hazardous lead levels and allowed some utilities to remain indifferent. Today, the Trump administration is rushing to finalize a plan that might make things worse. This was last year. When Trump was in office, this was last year. They went, they rushed to finalize a plan that would make lead, that would make lead in the water testing worse than, it, than, it, than it's ever been in the last 30 years. This is, from, this is from May 4th, 2020. The toxin has, has been buried for years across the country. Lead pipes are still carrying water into millions of homes more than 30 years after they, they were banned. They're tucked underground, out of sight, and for most Americans, out of mind, relics of an earlier time. But these aging condu conduits are still a risk for tens of millions of people. A new data anal analysis by APM reports shows that those pipes may be leaching significantly more lead into America into Americans' tap water than government monitoring has revealed. The EPA charged that ensuring the nation has clean air and water has allowed, has allowed utilities to use a testing method that doesn't detect the highest concentrations of lead from these water pipes, a deficiency the agency has long known about. Scientists at the EPA have spent a decade urging the government to require more rigorous testing methods but in its first major revision of lead and water regulations made public in October, the EPA ignored years of research by a scientist. The agency instead sided with water utilities in choosing to preserve its misleading test standards and APM reports investigation has found. And now the Trump administration amid global pandemic is pushing to finalize the revised regulations this summer. This rule does absolutely nothing to address all the deficiencies we've known about for the last 10 years, said one EPA researcher who's requested anonymity. It's an amazing house of cards that's not supported by the data. From a scientific perspective, we're, we're writing a rule that is, that is as backwards. It's indisputable <laughs> that there's no safe amount of lead for humans. Uh, the toxin is especially dangerous for children. Even small amounts can in inhibit brain development and intellectual ability. Congress banned the use of lead pipes in 1986, but allowed those already in the ground to remain. Three decades later, an estimated 15 to 22 million Americans still cook with, cook with and drink tap water, entering their home through lead pipes known as service lines. Instead of replacing all the lead service lines, the government has attempted to monitor and limit lead contamination in water, principally through the EPA's lead and copper rule. The nearly 30-year-old regulation lays out treatment standards that depend on regular testing. Lead is colorless and odorless when, it's dissolves, when it dissolves in water. The only way to detect it and confirm that treatment works is by testing water from the tap. From your, inside your own home. Mm -hmm. APM reports spent months investigating how, how the EPA monitors lead levels in drinking water and the process and people behind the, the rules revision. Report, reporters interviewed 17 current and former EPA scientists and experts, obtained internal memos, and analyzed extensive lead testing data 
for the first time. The investigation found the EPA's limit on lead in water, its action level isn't based on what's best for human health. An internal analysis obtained by the APM reports estimated that the limit would likely need to be 70% lower to prevent lead poisoning among young children. This is your government. This is your government at work right here. The EPA has known since 2011 that its testing method does, does not adequately measure how much lead can be released by lead pipes consequently, by lead pipes. Consequently, the EPA's water experts proposed changes to the lead and copper rule never publicly disclosed. That would have forced utilities to conduct more rigorous tests. Instead of enacting tougher rec requirements, the EPA dismissed them and ceded the process to, a, to an ad hoc advisory board with heavy representation from water utilities. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, instead of revising its testing methods to incorporate its scientists' research, oh, see, I'm still mm -hmm. um, the scientists' research, the EPA decided to leave the testing standards yeah. largely unchanged. Just the last paragraph. No, no, don't go back up to uh, in recent years. Okay. In recent years, utilities in, in Chicago and the state of Michigan use more rigorous testing methods in thousands of homes with lead service lines. APM reports analyzed the results and found lead levels two times higher on average than the results from EPA standard procedure. Two times higher. In, in Illinois, in, in Chicago, and in, in, in here in Michigan. That's right. Two times higher. I'm telling you. So let me get this. I'm going to the World Health Organization once again. This is on their website. It's called the Lead Poisoning, Lead Poisoning and Health. Lead exposure can have serious consequences for health of children. A high level of exposure, uh, lead attacks, uh, lead attacks the brain and central nervous system to call it, and it can cause coma, convulsions, and even death. Children who survive lead poisoning may be left with mental retardation and behavioral disorders at lower levels of exposure that can cause obvious symptoms of lead uh, at lower levels of exposure that cause no obvious symptoms of lead it is now known to produce a spectrum of injury across multiple body systems. In particularly, lead can affect children's brain development resulting in reduced intelligence. Behavioral changes such as reduced attention span and increased antisocial behavior and reduced educational attainment. Lead exposure also causes anemia, hypertension, renal impairment, uh, immune toxicity and toxicity to the reproductive organs. The neurological and behavior effects of lead are believed to be irreversible. Wow. Irreversible. This is the silent war. You stand at your sink and bombs are going off. Listen to me, Israel. I'm telling you. And you teachers of Israel ought to be teaching the children of Israel this message. We have to learn to say, help save ourselves and our children. We got to learn how to boil water, how to clean, how to make, how to grow our own food. We have enough space with just our back own backyards for us to help each other by growing different types of food. Well, we can get at least 70% of our meals from our own backyards. We know we growing that. We know where them seeds came from and not using hopefully genetically modified seeds because most of the seeds on the market are genetically modified now. Yeah. <laughs> but if I grow greens and you grow tomatoes and you grow uh, uh, what is it? melons <laughs> and you grow squash, we help one another and trade and give each other and trade off with one another different foods, help one another so we're not eating so much of this genetically modified foods. That are, that are hurting us. You wonder why your elbows is hurting and your knees. And, man, what's going on? You can't hardly get up off the table. 
You wonder what's going on with you. It's what you're eating. Let's get Daniel. The first chapter, Daniel. We're almost done. Mm -hmm. Daniel 1. Hmm? Yep, start at verse 1. This is book of Daniel, chapter Baby. 1, verse 1. Baby. Hey, stop. Come here. You need to turn it, turn it back around, baby. Yeah, she was in the tree in the Daniel 1, verse 1. Yeah. In the third year of the reign of Jehovah, jo jo king, king of Judah, King Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Mm -hmm. And also I gave Joachim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of Yah which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of, of, his, of his God. Mm -hmm. And he brought the vessels into the treasure, into the treasure house of his God. Mm -hmm. And the king spoke unto Asphanax, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and the, and the king's seed and the princes. Children in whom was no blemish, mm -hmm. but well-favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning at knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palaces and whom they might teach the learning and the tongues of the Chaldeans. Mm -hmm. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and, one, and of the wine which he drank. So nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Come on. Now among these were, were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Hananiah, Mishael, uh, and Mishael, Mishael, mm -hmm. and Azariah, mm -hmm. unto whom the princes of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the names of Belshazzar and to Hananiah of Shadrach and of Mishael of Meshach mm -hmm. and, and Azariah Abednego. Abednego. Mm -hmm. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. No, mm -hmm. no, with the wine which he drank. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he requested of the princes of the eunuchs. That he might not defile himself. That he might hold that, that he might not defile himself. Let's go to Titus real quick. Da Daniel had a pure mind. Let's go to Titus right quick. Titus. Titus 1 and 15. Titus 1, verse 15. <clears throat> unto the pure of all things are unto the pure, all things are pure. Mm -hmm. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving mm -hmm. is nothing pure. There's nothing pure. Unto the pure. All things are pure. Is that all the 15? Mm -hmm. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Mm -hmm. But even their mind and conscience are defiled. Verse 16. They profess that they know Yah, mm -hmm. but in works they deny him. But in works they deny him, come on. Being abominable mm -hmm. and disobedient mm -hmm. and unto every good work reprobate. This was the opposite of what Daniel was. <laughs> this was the opposite of what he was because he was pure. He was pure. Now give me Acts 15 and 29. I'm going somewhere with this. Give me Acts 15, 29. <clears throat> Acts 15, 29. This is the book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 29. That ye abstain from meats of offered to idols. That you abstain from meats offered to idols. This was Daniel's issue. Not that it was just merely meat, like some people say. It wasn't the fact that it was animal flesh. It was that, 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 that the animal flesh that he was being offered 
was sacrificed to, to, a, to an idol. From what? And from blood. And from blood. And from things strangled. Mm -hmm. And from fornication. Mm -hmm. From which, if you keep. Now, that fornication is not a sexual fornication. That's a spiritual fornication. Because bowing down to an idol, the bowing down to an idol is, is fornication. There's two types of fornication. One is, one is physical, which is a sexual fornication. The other is a fornication, whereas you bow down to an idol. Was that it? Come on now. For which, if you keep yourself, you shall do well. You, if you keep yourself from fornicating or bowing down to an idol or worshiping the idol or eating meats that are that are uh, that have been offered up to idols, like they're going to do tomorrow, because they're going to grandma's house tomorrow for dinner, for Easter, and that's and that is that is bowing down to an idol. That's offering your food to an idol. <clears throat> fare ye well. Mm -hmm. You're going to fare well. Now let's go back to, to Daniel. Daniel 1 and 9. Daniel 1 verse 9. Now Yah brought Daniel into favor mm -hmm. and tender love for the prince, the prince because of the universe. He unit. was pure. He came, he, he got favor because he was of a pure mind. Come on. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my I fear my master, mm -hmm. the king. Who had appointed your meat and your drink? Mm -hmm. For why should he see your face? Your face is worse liking than the children which are of your sort. Look, just the, the, the worse than the children, the rest of the children of Israel. That's what he means by your sort. You're a nation. Come on. Then shall you make me endanger my mm -hmm. head to the king. I mean, you're gonna make the king kill me if you don't eat what he gave, what he told me to feed you. Come on. Then said Daniel to Melzar. Mm -hmm. Whom the, whom the princes of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, mm -hmm. Mishael, mm -hmm. and Azariah. Read on. Prove thy servants, mm -hmm. I beseech thee, ten days, mm -hmm. and let them give us pulse to eat mm -hmm. and water to drink. Let us get, give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Now, many, many people use this as a reason to say to be vegan. You understand? But this wasn't the case. This was what, what wasn't going on here. What was going on here is he wasn't going to eat meats that were had been sacrificed to another god that's what was going on that's why he wasn't going to defile himself with that meat so he said i tell you what don't give me that meat that's been sacrificed in, uh, into a meat offering to that other god don't give me the wine that has been poured out as a drink offering that has, uh, uh, to that other god i tell you what i want to eat give me water and give me and give me pulse now pulse the original Hebrew word for pulse is zeroa. Zeroa. The Z E R O A. Zeroa. Which, according to the enhanced strong lexicon, is literally translated vegetables. But much more than that. Pulse, in, in this context, is typically, uh, has typically been said to mean lentils, chickpeas. A some, or some sort of seed type of food. Zara, which is uh, coming from the same root word of Zora, is found in the context of what the Most High gave to mankind to eat during creation. The definition for vegetables in, uh, enlarges considerably when the Most High defines what food is. The word zera, according to the enhanced Strong's lexicon, means fruit, fruitful plant, or plant-bearing seed. This indicates that the plant's ability to make its own seed, which can produce another plant. But we're going to go even further than that. This means that Daniel could have been asking for a plant diet that consists of fruits, grains, nuts, and vegetables and even mushrooms. Now we had a lot of we had a discussion about that a couple of weeks ago. Even mushrooms, because they have a fruiting body by which they sow their own seed. Mushroom. Mushrooms has a fruiting body. The wind carries their fruiting body and it re and it replants itself. Okay. So uh mushrooms because they have a fruiting body, all right? <clears throat> he also could have had 
because of what he's asked for, pulse, potatoes, garlic, beets, carrots, onions, because they make their own seeds. And the actual seed themselves, walnuts, almonds, sunflower seeds, cashew nuts, they all qualify from what, what is known as pulse, or what the Bible has described as pulse. So he had a variety of foods he could have choose from. He just didn't have a bowl of beans or something. All right, so let's go back to uh, Daniel uh, 1 and 13. Daniel 1 and 13. Then let our countenance be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them 10 days. He proved them 10 days, come on. And at the end of the 10 days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter. They look better and fresher, come on. And fatter in flesh mm -hmm. than all the children which did eat the portions of the king's so meat. So they ate that defiled meat that was sacrificed to that idol. Daniel mm -hmm. and, the other, and the other three uh, uh, Judite boys ate that pulse and kept themselves clear, clear of sacrificing to the idol. The most high blessed them. <clears throat> Come on. Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat mm -hmm. and the wine that they should that they should drink and gave them pulse. Mm -hmm. As for these four children, Yah gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. That's important to note. That's important to note. They already had knowledge and skill and understanding. Their minds are already pure when the, when the defiled meat came, so they knew what to do. They said, no, we don't, we don't want that. We want something else. Well, I'm telling you, we're leading in heart attacks. We're leading in cancer. We're leading in diabetes. We're leading in obesity. I'm talking about us. Our nation is lead, leading in those things. In what? <laughs> <laughs> We're leading those things. And it has a lot to do with what we are consuming. It has a, a, a whole lot to do with what we are consuming. Come on. Was we at 18 and 19? 18. 17? Yeah, didn't finish 17. Okay. And, and as, as for these four children, Yah gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. Uh -huh. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Come on. Now at the end of the day, of the days that the king had said he should he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought, brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. And the king communed with them, and among them, all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Mm -hmm. there, therefore stood they before the king. Read on. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in his realm. He and found all his them realm. 10 times better. 10 times better. Go on. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. So that lets you know that lets you know that that Daniel was a very old man. Cuz he could, he went through as a political prisoner of of, of Babylon the, all, the whole 70 years in captivity and the first year of King Cyrus he was there too. When the Persian captivity came in, he was also there. And he was a young man at the beginning of the Babylonian captivity. So he was up and probably up in his 80s and 90s years old, and he was still advising the king at that age. So he had all of his senses and he had his mind. Okay. With that being said, there, brothers and sisters, it's time for us to take control of every facet of our lives. We have to do it. I know sometimes it can be somewhat difficult. And sometimes our people can be quite lazy, but we have to do it in order. If we want to see, if we want to see our children healthy, we must do this. We must do this. If we want to get rid of some of the aches and pains that we go through, we must do this. It is said that it only takes two weeks of eating properly and getting clean foods in you for your body to have a reaction to it and to begin to change your life around. So we got to do that. But I and A, we're going to buy some land. 
we're going to buy some land and we're going to grow some crops. And they're going to be not touched by our enemy. That's what we're going to do. All right. All praises is right. So we hope you have gleaned from the lesson. We hope you have enjoyed the lesson. If you have any questions, please, by all means, write us. Call me, you brothers that have my number. Call me if you have any questions about what, what it is. you have any ideas that you want to present for, by all means, call me. Let me know. All right? That, so that being said, we say hallelujah. 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 God bless. <laughs>